a quick tutorial series. I had uploaded a video a little bit ago um, for craft fair ideas and it was like <clears throat> a minute or two and I had so many questions and messages asking how do I make this or how did I do that. So what I decided to do was make a quick little series about um, just quick and easy gift ideas for the craft fair for your teachers, for your um, neighbors and your co-workers, things that you can use um, items that you already have on hand or getting from like the Michaels or local craft store. So hopefully these will be inexpensive, quick and easy ways that you guys can implement into your craft fairs and your gifts and things that you're giving to other people. So the first thing um, that I'm going to make is a holiday planner. And I need one, so this one's going to be mine. These particular items come from the Cutting Cafe. I'll put a link in the description box first to all of my craft fair idea videos and then also to um, the link for this file. It's a PDF file. You print it out, cut it out, and it's a holiday planner. So there's four different um, things. I forget the last one. I didn't print it. I don't think I needed it, but this is, it was like the tabs. If you're going to do a journal book, I think it was tabs. So this is miscellaneous Christmas notes gifts, checklists, and Christmas cards to send, complete with spaces for name and address. So simple, easy, quick, print it out, cut it out. Otherwise, you can just, if you just want blank sheets of paper, you can use copy paper. These are three and a half by eight, and I have 12 sheets of each of these design cut, printed out on standard 20 pound weight copy paper. So all I did was use my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher to put a couple staples in at the top to be able to hold them together. I just use that and I just put two staples at the top because I'm going to attach it to my planner. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So um, here we go. I want to start out cutting my chipboard and I'm just using really lightweight like cereal weight chipboard. Um, these I collect from work at the bottom of packages but these are the same weight as cereal boxes. So I just know something like I don't want a book to carry in my purse, just something light that I could carry around when I think of something. I'm gonna cut the chipboard down to three and a half by eight. And you also need um, some base paper, whatever paper that you're going to use under your pattern paper, your decorative paper. So I'm using white and I'm using the 12 by 12. So you can also use um, 8 half by 11 and connect them together as well. But I happen to have a, a few sheets of, or a little stack of 12 by 12, so I'm going to use that. And I'm actually going to connect them together so that the paper can be a little bit bigger here. Okay. So, I'm going to connect them with two pieces of double-sided tape. Okay. And the the I could I could do um, if I if I use a smaller gusset, I could use one sheet of 12 by 12, but it's a stretch and I really don't want to deal with the having to wrestle with it. So, I'm just going to make the gussets a half an inch. So all I did was take the double sided tape and connect the two 12 by 12 pieces together. Okay, so I'm going to get my scoreboard and then I'm going to start my scoring. So if you're using a 12 by 12, you'll do the same thing here. I'm going to leave myself, to have so much paper, I'm going to leave myself an inch to be able to flip on the side to be able to close it up um, to, to seal it, you know, wrap the, the chipboard. So I'm going to score it at one inch. Now whatever size you make yours, you don't have to make it this exact size, but this is the math of it. So leave yourself some the same amount of space on the beginning, the beginning of the chipboard pieces and at the end so that you can fold it over and be able to seal Still wrap the chipboard so leave yourself you use half inch or inch inch and a half whatever it is do it on both sides and then from that point 
take the size of your chipboard, this is three and a half, the length, and then score it. So this is obviously going to be at four and a half. Okay, and then from there, from that mark, that's a little bit more than four and a half, that was more like one, two, three, four, four and five eighths. My thing is really thick, so use a finer tip. I had an ink pen here earlier, but just measure, if you just measure the exact width of your chipboard, you, you can't go wrong. So if it's, just measure, put it on there and measure it. So from here, you just want a half an inch from this spot here. So I'm going to move this over four and then I'm going to score it just for easier scoring and math. I'm going to score it at four and a half. And then I'll need another three and a half mark. So this is four and a half plus three and a half. Let me score it at eight. I'm going to, I'm going to do eight and an eighth actually to give myself a little room. And then from there you want a half an inch. So I just move my pieces over so I can get it easy, it's easier to do it that way. So I'm going to put a half an inch there. And then from there, you need your last three and a half inch space. So put this there. This should be eight and a half, which since I started off a little shorter or a little bit extra, I'm going to do eight and five eighths. So, and then from there, we're just going to do another half inch. So I'll go over that. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. One, two, three. Oh, we want to do another inch. So never mind this mark. This is, this is just going to be folded over, so it's not going to matter. An inch on the other side. Okay. So, we start out with an inch. The first time I did this, I had a half inch, so that's what's on my head. But um, you have an inch here, and then you have the width of your chipboard, which is three and a half inches. So you have your first starting out with your fold over pieces an inch. Then you have three and a half inches. And then you have your gusset of a half inch. Then you have three and a half inch. You have your gusset of a half inch. Then you have your three and a half inch. And then you're ending it, because we're only doing three, with the inch again. So that's where you're going to cut. So, okay. It's pretty easy. I'm going to bring my trimmer back out and cut off that last piece. This is what you should have. Now, I did that this way so we can have a guideline of where we want our chipboard pieces to be so that they will be all nice and even when we lay them down. So, if you can eyeball this, that's great. I just like mine to fold perfectly. I don't want it to be wonky at all. So, what I'm going to do is take some double sided tape and I'm going to apply it to the back of this chipboard to secure it to the paper. Now this can work for any, obviously this can work for any size, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, something bigger, something smaller. All you need is the gussets to match and the width of the chipboard numbers to match. So it's, you could do this any, with anything. So as you can see, I'm just adding double sided tape to make sure this stays okay. I'm bring back my paper take my first piece of chipboard and just lay it center of the space that I gave it just it should fit in there nice and easy Second piece. Now we're skipping a gusset right there. We're just try your best to even it out with the one you just laid down. Skipping the gusset. And then the last one. If 
if you need to draw a line across or score it or something really lightly so you can see if you want to if you don't want to eyeball it but that looks great to me okay so next thing you want to do is fold this over and get my bone folder give it a good crease And then the last one. Okay, so I have extra paper. I'm going to top and bottom. I'm just going to cut that down a bit when you're folding it, wrapping the chipboard. I really only need about an inch or so. Okay, so we're going to miter the corners and we're you can see where this intersection is, meets. So I'm going to take your scissors and cut right above the corner. Like so. And you want to do that to all four sides. Get your double sided tape out again and then add it to the paper. Fold it over. Take the tape off. And so, if you miss this corner, like here, it's not very, very close. Just take your bone folder. Make sure you fold that. Just crease it a little bit so it'll fold nicely over for you. So now you just want to go back over the folds, each fold, you can lightly crease it with your bone folder. I'm not going to do that, I don't want to tear my paper, I'll just be gentle. Okay, so that's that, now we want to use that, oh I'm going to use this leftover piece of paper and then I'm going to cover the inside. First I'm going to measure it. So just take your your scoreboard or ruler and just measure how long, how wide it is. This is um, about 11 and 3 quarters by 8. So I'm going to cut that down to that. This I'm going to use ATG tape on. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is lay this, eyeball it and lay it as evenly as I can. Follow the creases again, just lightly, or you can just fold it, but really quick here. Okay. So now you just have your Trifold. See how perfect that is? Like, I would not have been able to eyeball that. Okay, now it's time to add the closure piece. 
if you're going to use one. If you're not going to use one, you're fine to do it like this. Put a little band on top of her band or leave as is and just it, it'll be easier to open and close um, once you're ready to use it. But I'm going to add a little closure piece to mine. So I want to add the piece to the back middle piece. So the back middle piece here is where I'm going to add it. So just flip it back over. I'm going to use some uh, double sided tape. Just a little strip. Okay, and then I'm going to pretend like I'm going to close it here. So right here on the back middle piece is where I will apply this tape. Make sure it's on there nice and good. And I'm using some ribbon that I got from um, the Dollar Tree. Glitter ribbon in gold. And just adhere that on there. So that's that. Because it's going to close like that. I don't need this big amount, but I'll, I'll trim it down after I lay my paper down. So as for the paper, I'm just going to use this gold foil paper from the Hot Buy at Michaels. And I only have a few sheets left, a couple of these left. So I'm also going to use a little journaling piece from that same collection. And then a sticker from the Target Dollar Spot. These are a set of 23 glitter holiday stickers. I don't want a whole lot of bulk. So um, because I am going to have it in my purse, I want a slimmer, sleeker profile. This is the paper that I'm using from that collection. So um, close that up and then I'm going to get another piece of double sided tape. And I'm going to add a magnet closure here. Put this right here. Put in my double sided tape right there. That is where I'm going to apply my magnet. I keep in this all toy tin because obviously they connect to everything. So, um, just grab a magnet here. Put it on there. Press firmly. And then I'm going to cut out the extra. Add a magnet to the back of this ribbon. Oh, it's like wrestling here. All right. I want to put it a bit closer. Measurements down. Cut that off. And then I'm just going to fold this over here. I hope you guys can see here. Just folding over that edge on top of that magnet. So now I'm just going to add my papers and we're good to go. Okay. So I just chose to do the same paper for all of the outside. Just 
Makes it easier using up my paper. This one will cover the back. I'm not going to do anything on the inside. One, it adds bulk that I don't need. I'm not giving this to anyone, so I don't need to decorate the inside. But I do want it to look pretty on the outside. Make sure it's on there. Okay. So, let me grab my little journaling spot while I'm here. Sticker stick. Okay. Super cute. <gasps> Super cute. So now we're going to pull out the little papers. Now, again, I'm using Holiday Planner from the Cutting Cafe. Now, a couple of, um, well, just one thing I wanted to suggest if you are printing out your own paper uh, or, or you, you're able to do it yourself and you want to have your own little designs, you can always leave like a little space. At the top so here's a scratch sheet of paper and you know cover up a little bit of this and fold it over let's just say you're doing it like this I'm not gonna do it but cover that up and just fold it over and then adhere that to your background so it'll look really nice and pretty um, I don't have I did mine exactly to the letter like to the T so it fits perfect. I don't, and then the, my sentiments are at the way top, so I don't have room to do that. But if you try, if you plan to use just plain paper, go ahead and decorate it a little bit. Try not to be too bulky, because you won't be able to close it. So I'm just going to add double-sided tape to the back. You can um, add a piece of chipboard if you want, but this will be fine for me. This will be fine, period. I mean, you can add a little piece of chipboard. Again, it just adds bulk and it's just more time consuming. But you can definitely add a, uh, a layer to fold over and then add chipboard or add chipboard to it or what have you. So all I'm doing, obviously, is just layering these right in there. They fit perfectly. Make sure you use some good tape and then when I'm when I'm done obviously I can just take these off and put more in or um, I can rip off rip it off if I need to so that closes that way and then that closes there and then that closes there so how stinking cute is that profile there we go it's the profile you can add paper to the side if you want you cannot quick and easy so hopefully you guys will try this at home for your craft fair your teacher or neighbor gift or for yourself links will be in the description box if you would like to um, subscribe to me on other social media but if you like this video and it was helpful please hit the like button thanks so much bye